Now, the recent award of a 48 billion naira a year oil pipeline protection contract by the federal government to government Ekpemupolo, a former Niger Delta militant, became a controversial subject right from the get-go and in the intervening weeks and months has touched base with virtually all the political fault lines of the Niger Delta region. The contract awarded to the man popularly called Tompolo has been raising deep concerns about the capacity of the state to secure the lives and property of Nigerian citizens. Joining us now to take a quick look at all of the emerging issues regarding this development is Iteve Epobome, a political activist and anti-corruption crusader. Welcome to Newsday. Thank you so much. So can you tell us some of your con the concerns you might have regarding this um, pipeline protection contract? The pipeline uh, protection contract holistically was given to Tompolo, our kinsman from the Niger Delta. Uh, as much as it is sad, I must start by saying that it is sad that at this level we are fighting over the breadcrumbs that have been given to us in the Niger Delta, having been the, 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 golden, the, the golden hen that is laying the golden eggs for, the, for Nigeria to consume. The pipeline's contract was given to Tompolo, and today a lot of issues have been raised over the pipeline uh, contract. One of such is that uh, Asari Dokubo, one of the ex-militants uh, or agitators of Niger Delta respected, he laid his complaint that, look, as far as Calabari as is of Niger Delta is concerned, you cannot, you cannot give the contract to Tompolo to oversee Calabari. That is only proper that some of us who are stakeholders in Niger Delta should be accorded the respect and given a quota of our, of our system to, to, to look over. Of course, a country subcontract was carved out from the Tompolo's contract and given to Asari Dokubo. The same thing for the Shekiri Aziz, which the Ayeris and uh, the monarchs are in charge of. But it came to Urobo Aziz, uh, the deputy senior president, Omar Gege, took charge of that. And a company was provided, Zane and Energy Limited, was provided to look over the, the, the contract uh, surveillance uh, circle of Urobo Nation. But our problem now is this. The, the issue we have with that position is this. Isoko Nation was also included in the Urobo Aziz of the Pipeline Surveillance Contract, which was given to Omagege, which we feel is wrong in its entirety. Because Isoko Nation is in Delta South political uh, uh, senatorial district. Omagege, the deputy senate president, is overseeing Delta Central uh, senatorial district. It is only fair that since stakeholders in the region are being considered and given contracts to overlook their sector, that a leader or leaders of Isoko Nation should be consulted and a company be provided for them to, prov to, for them to adequately supervise and look after their uh, uh, crude oil installations. That is just the position we are having. And for the first time in the history of Isoko Nation, youths, over 11 youth groups, came together as a coalition, and they have written several letters to the presidency, they have written several letters to the National Security Advisor, the NMPC, DSS police, and to all, who, all national stakeholders involved in this matter have been properly addressed. Even a letter of appeal was written to Omar again by virtue of his position to say, look, come in, ensure that Isoko Nation is properly represented in the, in the, in the scheme of things. But till today, as we speak, nothing has happened the man holds sway over Urubo and is also holding sway over Isoko Nation, which we feel is an, is an anomaly. Secondly, some parts of Isoko Nation which are uh, situated in Bayasa State, some communities there controlling uh, some crude oil wells, are not being reflected at all in this pipeline uh, surveillance contract. And a letter was written by the leaders of this community to, to the governor of Bayasa State, as well as uh, Tompolo. So say, please, if it is possible, and NPC, that if it is possible, please bring us into the contract. Or better still, carve a fresh contract or subcontract for us. So these are some of the issues that are biting on us as we speak. And we feel it's only necessary that the government should look into it. We cannot allow, we cannot allow, and I repeat, the deputy senate president to hold sway or to lord over Isoko Nation. Isoko Nation is not, is not a conquered territory by anybody, whether politically or in any ramification. The man is running for governor. This is the time for him to prove equity. And he has not proved it at all. It is only sad that even at this point, he's going to a so to come to for campaigns when he has sat 
sat on the fortunes of these people. He has sat and he has told the world that, look, they, are no, they had nothing to write home about. And that is just the cross of the issue on ground. All right, uh, Itebe, uh, you've itemized uh, quite a number of issues here, but uh, still on the issue of the subcontract and uh, the one for uh, Sari Dokubu and others uh, representing their zones where the pipelines actually go through, do you think this is a fail-proof uh, measure in preventing all theft or just providing income uh, for several individuals here? So is this, uh, will this actually prevent uh, the, the pipeline vandalism in the long run? Uh, pipeline vandalism, uh, as it is uh, widely known, is uh, or rather crude oil theft across the country and even in countries where crude oil has uh, have been, it's been explored, is uh, relatively done by those in government and also in partnership with several uh, interests all over the world. So, but for pipeline surveillance contracts of this nature, it is only proper that certain persons, people who are living within the confines of this pipeline uh, 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 objects or projects so far, participate actively in securing their, 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 the pipelines running in their communities. And of course, security can only be more adequate when those on ground partner with security operatives to, to, to give requisite information when necessary. So the pipeline surveillance contract to Niger Delta is, is applauded, it's necessary, it, it will help, of course, immensely to call because there's no way, there's no way uh, new elements can enter a zone where those who are on ground are there to oversee what is happening. So that is why we feel that, yes, to, to a large extent it's going to work, and of course, we can see that Tom Polas, he kicked off, he kicked off his operations and a lot of... Uh, Issues here and there were we are seen and identified and revealed to the government. The Senate and National Assembly have also passed a vote of confidence on the contract so far, judging by uh, the work he has done. So I think it is quite adequate. But we have the only issue we have is that there are critical stakeholders in the sector who are not being carried along, and especially Soko Nation, and we cannot sit to allow other persons to control what is in their region. That is it. Uh, and you've, you've painted a very clear picture about, you know, non-representation of the Soko Nation regarding this um, pipeline protection contract, and you've written letters and whatnot. But I'm wondering what are your next steps following this interview regarding ensuring that those issues that you've highlighted are addressed in a timely fashion and sooner rather than later? Thank you so much. Before now, Isoko Youths, they sat down, they issued a seven day ultimatum to the federal government, calling on them to, add, to address the issues on ground because tempers were high. And uh, I must commend one of our leaders, Assistant Inspector General of Police, uh, retired, AIG Obado Felix, who came into the picture to say, No, my children, it is not necessary at this point. Isokos are not known for restiveness. We must employ all levels of all manners of diplomacy in going about this matter. And he was able to call the youths to order, and they have also obeyed. Uh, we will try to explore as much as possible all legal means to drive home our point. Isoko Nation has not, is known over the years to be very peaceful. And sadly so, I must say that we produce over 28% of, of crude oil in the country, and being the largest onshore producing communities in, in West Africa. When it comes to crude oil, it is sad that we are being relegated to the background because we, we, have, we have not shown our, our capacity to be violent. And so on this note, we're also calling on the federal government to look into it properly. We are calling on persons like Senator Magege, who is running for the governor, to come in and remove his hands from issues that concern Isoko, because it's not from Isoko region. Stakeholders of Isoko Nation should be properly consulted, and they must come in to secure their own pipelines, if a contract like that is existing. And of course, it is existing. Uh, very good, Itebe. Now, still on a general point of view here, um, public perceptions seem to indicate uh, the NNPC knows more than it is telling on pipeline vandalism, uh, illegal oil bunkering, and even allegations of complicity of, uh, in oil theft by security personnel. So, you know, based on what you've told us so far, and uh, what, how does one draw a line between all these arguments 
and uh, the surveillance contract as well. How does this actually work uh, in this uh, regard? And also, you remember, you mentioned the fact that uh, they also know something, and uh, probably this might also not uh, uh, all go well for the main objective of surveilling uh, these uh, uh, pipelines in the first place. Uh, restiveness in the Niger Delta, violence by youths and uh, other stakeholders was what brought about uh, uh, the picture of government even coming in at the first time to say, look, there should be peace. A Ministry of Niger Delta was created, presidential amnesty was created to, to pacify the youth, you know. Uh, at this point, whether we like it or not, a lot of harm and damage have been done to, to the region. And it is not a rocket science. We cannot just wake up overnight and expect that the results are going to be automatic. It's going to take some time. It's going to take the government looking deep into their system and fishing out those who are culpable when it comes to participation in crude oil theft. And of course, the locals are ready. Those who are on ground, the indigenous and residents of these places are on ground. So, we can tell you that viably the pipeline surveillance contract is, uh, is necessary. It's necessary because the federal government has tried their best. They have installed security operatives everywhere. And even a pipeline uh, that was recently discovered by Tompolo is just min uh, miles away from, from a security outpost. What does that tell us? That even right under their nose, things were still happening. So we think that this uh, pipeline surveillance contract is necessary because the locals, they see what is happening. They are the ones going to the farms. They are the ones living in the community. So when they see suspected movement, they will be more inclined to cooperate, cooperate with uh, security uh, operatives because now they feel it is a collective project. But over time, where they are being sidelined and they don't feel it is necessary, you see some persons who, even though it is against uh, uh, good citizenship, but you see persons who are becoming quite uninterested in whatever is happening in the country because of the way the country has also treated them in, in return. So that is it, sir. Now, regarding the still, of course, on the pipeline protection contract, besides the non-representation and non-inclusion of the Soko Nation, if that was actually incorporated, would you be content with how things were outlined in that contract? Or would you have made some adjustments besides the non-inclusion? Of course, we would have loved to make more adjustments. The, 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 struggle, the struggle for emancipation of the Niger Delta is hinged on one particular point. That is resource control. Government should give us access to control our resources. That is all we, are, we keep on crying for. NDDC, um, what do we call it, Presidential Amnesty Program, Ministry, Ministry of Niger Data Affairs, all these are pacification plot by the government to say, oh, our people, please calm down. We need this crude oil to run the government. But the facts still remain. We are resolute. Everywhere in the world, where crude oil is discovered, people there are, 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 are critical stakeholders and shareholders in, in the crude oil and pipeline uh, issues. But when it comes to Niger Data, we are being sabotaged. Our environment is destroyed. People can't assess their, their, their fish ponds. People can't go to farms. Their main state, their livelihood is being destroyed. Yet the government is not giving critical attention to issues like this. Gas flaring is still top notch. In the Niger Delta, soot is destroying. You can't even breathe in clean air, clean water, not there for anybody to consume. So the main state of our agitation is still hinged on resource control. And even though the pipeline surveillance contract is necessary at this point, because it is a step forward. And like I said earlier, we are barely fighting over crumbs that have been thrown at us. But then, the crumbs should be adequately distributed while we push for more uh, loaves of bread to come upon us. Uh, very good, Itebe. Now, initially, um, do you think it was right to entrust uh, the security of a nation's main source of income uh, to one individual? That is uh, Tompolo, where we're talking about here. Uh, where does the issue of national security come in here? And now, you know, all stakeholders have been, uh, you know, incorporated into all this. But initially, there were some misgivings that uh, he was uh, given that contract. So how would you react uh, to that? Uh, 
if 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 I want to come in in form of a question, I will say who is in a better position to look after this uh, after the pipelines? Youths were restive. Pipelines were destroyed. There was a series of kidnapping in the Niger Delta region for years until the federal government came in to say, no, it is necessary at this point for us to call this use to order. What do you want? They say, we want jobs. We want the development of the Niger Delta. It's all right. We can do this and do this for you now. They created an agency. They created, they created a, a commission to look over the region. Now, there are youths, whether we like it or not, there are youths who were actively involved in the destruction of pipelines, in the sales of bulk, uh, uh, illegal crude and oil theft at a time that the, the restiveness was at, was at its peak. These persons have tasted money. They have tasted what it, what it is like to, to have a good life. And even though the federal government has tried to pacify them, uh, you can't rule it out that there will still be some bad eggs who will go back to say, no, because we've had a, a better offer in our illegal dealings, we want to go back to it. So for, for the fact that these persons have been on ground, they have tested what it, it is like in the field, it is only proper that if you want to, to secure the pipelines, you call them to say, oh, my people, it, it, please come over. This is what you've been doing before. Look at them. This time, don't destroy them. This time, identify those who want to destroy them and help us to police them. And I think it is a very, uh, it is a, a, a laudable action to take. And I think the security operators of this country, uh, they did a very nice job in doing that. And on that note, so I would like to thank you for your time. Iteve no a popobe, political and uh, anti-corruption crusaders. Good to have you with us uh, on the show.